Good evening, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to Grace Gate Meet Week Bible Study. We're back in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13. As always, let us begin in prayer. Heavenly Father, we bless your name tonight. We ask you, Lord, to open our hearts, to illuminate your word, grant us understanding, open our spirits to receive your word and give us the grace, O Lord, to do it as we have heard it, that it might please you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. So here we are back in the book of the Acts of the Apostles, uh, chapter 13. Uh, last week we looked at chapters 11 and 12, and we dealt with a number of interesting issues of the church, you know, uh, growing bigger outside of the uh, Jewish homeland and Antioch becoming a new capital in Turkey for Christians. We also saw that the first reference to Christians as, you know, a nomenclature was made in Antioch and that a group of people who were studying and receiving Christ was much greater outside of, of Israel, that is. So today we're going to continue to look at, uh, in the first uh, few verses of chapter 13, we're going to see the ordination mandate. And then we're going to proceed as we read in the chapter to the theme of opposition and dispersal. And we will conclude with section three of chapter 13 you know, by giving thumbs up to the master plan of God. Now, ordination mandate. We witness at the very beginning of this chapter, the solemn ordination of Barnabas and Saul as, you know, uh, directed by the Holy Spirit. We're told that the, the church had been fasting and praying, you know, and at the behest of the Holy Spirit, they decided to lay hands on Barnabas and Saul and, you know, uh, commission them to spread the gospel among the nations. Now, it is also probable that other apostles or apostolic men dispersed themselves by other of Christ upon the same errands. But this was the first time that uh, the church, uh, the Acts uh, Church, commissioned these young men to go out and preach the gospel. And they went out uh, in full force in what is now described as the first missionary journey. And they took the gospel to Cyprus. And it's, it's interesting that when they arrived in Cyprus, they met there with opposition from a gentleman named uh, Elimus the Sorcerer. We'll get to that in a minute. Now, they spent time, you know, uh, uh, trying to prefer the Jews. In other words, speak to them first. The herds of a sermon which Paul preached at the Jews at Antioch in Pisidia, in the synagogue, uh, gives us a specimen of what you, you know, what is usually preached to the Jews, the method that they took with them. Much of this chapter, you know, takes a chronological look at the relationship that God himself had with the Jews and the preaching of the gospel to the Gentiles only came after the refusal, you know, of the Jews to, uh, you know, embrace the gospel of Jesus Christ, wherein the apostles themselves were justified, you know, against the displeasure which they received from the Jews, you know, and moving on with that, we see the master plan of God that the trouble which the unbelieving Jews gave to the uh, apostles, obliged them to move to another place. So that the design of this is to show how cautiously and how gradually, and with good reason, the apostles carried the gospel into the Gentile world and admitted, admitted the Gentile into the church, which was so great an offense to the Jews, and, and which Paul is so industrious to justify in most of his epistles. Amen. You know, so let us continue uh, to see how these developed 
in chapter 13. Amen. So here we are again, you know, looking deeper on the issue of the mandate. We have here a divine warrant and a commission to Barnabas and Saul to go preach the gospel among the Gentiles and their ordination to that service by the imposition of hands with fasting and prayer. Antioch was a great city and the Christians there were, were many so that they could not all meet in one place. Therefore, they should have many teachers preside in their respective assemblies and deliver God's word to them. Barnabas is first named probably because he was uh, the elder and Saul last probably because he was younger. But afterward, he became the first and more eminent in the church. You know, uh, it is said somewhere in the scripture that the first shall be the last and the last the first. You know, and they also took with them on this journey a young man named John. Moving on to the uh, theme of opposition, a particular account of their encounter with Elimus the sorcerer who met with them in Paphos where the governor resided a place that is famous for a temple built to Venus. You know, idolatry was, uh, you know, rooted in their uh, popular culture. Uh, Paphian, Venus, and therefore there was more than the ordinary need that the Son of God should be manifested to destroy the works, the works of the devil. Now here's an interesting encounter. Sergius Paulus was the Roman proconsul, the equivalent of a governor of a district. Now, Elimus, you know, served at the behest of Sergius, and Sergius, Elimus himself, a Jew, you know, he was also known as Bar Jesus, son of Joshua. Sergius Paulus, who was a Roman, wanted to hear the gospel. In fact, he invited Barnabas and Paul to preach to him and receive them well, whereas Elimus opposed them and did all he could to obstruct their progress. He was blinded, and this act, you know, uh, the, the apostles called for blindness for a season so that the light was taken out of him. And this miraculous act, when he was cursed and he became blind, caused many to turn to God because they believed when they saw the signs and wonders of the powerful sorcerer blinded at the word of the apostles. You know, so again, there was much opposition which justified the apostles in turning to the Gentiles that the Jewish was so malignant against them. You know, an abundance of Jews, you know, going back to the master plan, lived in Antioch. And to them, the gospel was to be uh, first preached. Paul's sermon to them is that we have in these verses, you know, which is likely to be the substance of what was preached by the apostles generally to all Jews in all places. For in dealing with them, the proper way was to show them how the New Testament, which they would have them receive, exactly corroborated or agreed with the Old Testament, which they not only received, but were zealous for. You know, so it is always a historical account of the Father's founding fathers and the uh, patriarchs of Israel and the covenant that they had with Jehovah God and the promises and the prophecies fulfilled and the manifestation bringing them up to the present day. But where they parted ways was when they were asked to receive Christ as the Son of God. This really caused a rift in their relationships, the Jews and the Messianic Jews. So here are some closing, closing thoughts on chapter 13. Although they had lately had such good success with the Roman deputy, yet when they came to Antioch, they did not inquire for the chief magistrate, nor make their courts to him, made their court to him, but they applied to the Jews, which is further proof of their good affection to them and their desire of their welfare. Not only did they go first to the house of Israel, just like Jesus did, you know, when he met with this Hierophonician woman, he says, I was called to the house of, the, uh, of Israel, 
the household of Israel, the lost sheep. So likewise, they met with them in their place of worship in the synagogue. Note that Sabbath days should be kept holy in solemn assembly. They are instituted chiefly for public worship. The Sabbath day is a holy day at convocation. And for that reason, there is no servile work uh, to be done. So they obeyed the Jews and they met with them at their invitation in their synagogues. But beyond that point, when the Jews were presented with the gospel of accepting Jesus Christ, they vehemently opposed and, and they rejected them. And so that the apostles had no choice but to shake the dust off of their feet and, and go forth, noting that God is the Lord of all the earth. So the Gentiles who were not favored, the Gentiles who were not the apple of God's eye historically, became the recipient of his grace, became the recipient of his bountiful blessings, that the church grew beyond Israel and the church became universal and the faith became universal. You know, so chapter 13 really paints this picture of not only the expansion of the church beyond Jerusalem and Israel, but also the uh, interplay between the Jews, the Gentiles, the message of the gospel, the missionary life, the power of God, you know, and all of the, uh, you know, uh, interplay between the rulers of the synagogue and these missionaries who were bent on turning the town upside down for Jesus Christ. My brothers and my sisters, that is the end of our, you know, uh, lesson for today. These takeaway thoughts point to our lives in ways that we can think of sharing the gospel in our community. You know, when one door closes, others open. If you uh, speak to people who reject the gospel, shake the dust off your feet and go forth. Don't get hurt. Don't get caught up in regrets, thinking of inadequacies and thinking, if only I had said this or I said that. It is not of him who wills, nor of him who, uh, you know, uh, prays or wishes. It is of God who showeth mercy. He is a sovereign God. You know, he says, if you do not rise up in praise, I will cause the stones to cry out. Inanimate objects, God will suspend the laws of nature to make his word go forth. Amen. Have a blessed week. I'll see you on Sunday by his grace. Amen. Be blessed.